Hey what's up guys, it's Ben Balk and welcome back to the 49th Slime Keep devlog. In this devlog, I worked on replayability for the game and also found a way to automate Slime Keep. Also, if you're new here, Slime Keep is a fast-paced roguelike where you must kill and capture slimes to stop the corruption that has infected your land. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, as you can probably tell, Slime Keep is continuing to get closer and closer to release. And one of my final bucket list items to work on is replayability in the game, or extra content that the player can access, so there's still stuff to do after the player beats the Slime King for the first time. And me and some of my playtesters had a few ideas to accomplish this replayability. The first of which was a challenge mode. The idea here was that the player could unlock this mode after beating the Slime King once. Then if the player activates this challenge mode and starts to run, the game will just be more difficult overall. Slime ball drops will be halved, slimes will do more damage, and so on. This way, experienced players can hopefully get a real challenge out of the game if they find it too easy in normal mode. So to get started in creating this new mode, we first needed a way to activate it. And my idea was that there could be this pit slash basement area inside of the player's house. As mentioned, this basement area would only unlock after beating the game once, and from here the player could activate challenge mode and do a few other things. So I got to work and created this simple basement area. If I hit E, we'll drop down this ladder into a whole new room, which I thought was pretty cool. Then I added in the same basement room into the start screen house area and created two statues. We'll get to the statue on the left some other time, but for now, I could walk up to the statue on the right, press E to worship it, and boom, challenge mode is now activated. And if I worship the statue again, challenge mode will be deactivated. But now if I head back up the ladder and start a new save, that save will be started in challenge mode, which we can then head back to the start screen and see here that that save will be marked specially. Then I created the actual logic for challenge mode, which really wasn't too difficult as I didn't necessarily add any new content or change enemy attacks, which would have been cool, but admittedly it was just much easier to change some of the values around. But that was challenge mode for you, and I figured I needed a way to explain it to the player, so I made this mouse NPC named Declan, who you can ask a few questions to and learn how the mode works. Now, challenge mode was a cool concept, but I wanted there to be a bit more than just an increase in difficulty. I always thought it would be cool if the player could somehow upgrade their house area, or at least be able to purchase some cosmetics that would be persistent throughout all runs. And my idea to accomplish this was to make a new currency called Special Slime Balls. I imagined that the player could gain these slime balls after beating the game in challenge mode, and the amount that they would gain would be the number of regular slime balls they have left in their inventory at the time of beating the Slime King. So it would kind of go with the risk reward nature of the game, where if the player tries to beat the game using less slime balls for weapons and upgrades, they could be rewarded at the end with more special slime balls if they beat the game in this way. So with that idea in mind, I got to work and created this new NPC in the basement which I call the Builder, and after a few days of work, I set up all the Builder's products that can be purchased with special slime balls. So let's take a look. First up we had three cosmetic upgrades that would affect the inside of the house. So if I purchase all of these, we can see that firstly, there is now this Goopy Bird arcade machine in the basement that the player can play at any time. This is just a simple minigame that is also present in the Goose Station lore room, but I figured it would be a cool idea to let the player play this game whenever they wanted to, if they decide to spend their special slime balls on it. Then if I head back up to the main floor, we can see the two other upgrades I purchased, which are kind of a window looking thing on the wall and a carpet on the floor. Overall, it's nothing crazy, but I do think these inside house upgrades spice up the house a bit. Next up, we had three outside house upgrades, so if I purchase them and head outside, we can right away see that the first upgrade here adds way more flowers to the hub area, if the player wants that. And we also have this sort of neon looking skin for the Sliminator pin. Then finally, if I head up to the top left of the room, I also purchased a nice little cosmetic campfire that the player can chill at if they want. Now moving on, we also had three inside house skins which would just change around the color scheme of the floors and walls inside of the house. First up, we have this really yellow floor skin, which is definitely bright to say the least. Then we had this light green floor, which I actually thought looked pretty cool, as well as a dark blue floor, which again was just a neat way to change the whole look for the inside of the house. But then for the final set of upgrades, we had four unique house skins. Firstly, there was just this alternate house skin that wasn't too crazy, maybe just a bit more modern. Next, we had something that was a bit more unique, being this bouncy house skin made by Alan Draw 18, which was really cool in my opinion, and pretty bouncy I guess. Moving on, we had a pretty cold house skin, being the igloo made by Green Explosion 08 in my Discord server, so shout out to him. And finally, we had the most expensive house skin, being a really cool mushroom house made by I Am Water. So yeah, that's all the house skins in the game, and what you can use your special slime balls on. Right now, you can only gain these special slime balls from the challenge mode, but I've got some feedback that you should also be able to gain them from beating the regular game, so let me know what you think. 
but personally, I think you should smash the wishlist button on the Slimekeep Steam page. Wishlists are really important to upcoming Steam games, so it would really mean a lot to me if you took a few seconds out of your day and clicked the link in the description. Thanks. Anyways, let's switch gears for a second, and let me tell you how I automated my game. Well, sort of. Not to say that I automated the game's development and now have AI doing everything for me, but I recently completely automated my game's playtesting and builds, which I thought I'd show you the process. But first, well, what was the problem with playtesting for Slimekeep before? The answer is, essentially, I would only release a new build for the game every few months or so. I might do a few small patches here and there, but in general, I would work on the game for a few months and shove all that new work into one big update. Now, this might sound like normal practice for some game developers, but the issue is, it's just really not ideal. After each release, I would get hit with tons and tons of bugs for me to fix, and the whole process of building and deploying the game to Steam was all manual and time consuming, which prevented me from doing it more frequently. So to fix this, that's where I learned about the world of DevOps and CICD. Now, for some of you, that might sound a little alien, but let me explain, and please just stick with me because I'll try to make it as simple and interesting as possible. Basically, CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery slash Deployment, which basically means that as developers, you frequently and incrementally make changes to your code and publish these changes for testing. So, for example, I could hypothetically make it so whenever I fix a bug in Slimekeep, that bug fix will automatically be seen in the live versions of the game's testing, which may not sound like much, but it's actually really cool, to me at least. But anyways, to start setting up a system like this for Slimekeep, I learned about a tool called GameCI, which kind of allows you to set up a CI system for games. I also learned about GitHub Actions, which are essentially blocks of code that people can make and publish that run when you do something in a GitHub repository. So for example, I have a Slimekeep repository in GitHub right now, and I can set up a GitHub action to automatically run whenever I push new changes to this repository. But anyways, I got to work and after hours of going through the GameCI documentation and trying to figure out how GitHub actions work, I got something set up. Here in my GitHub repository, I now have this main.yml file. Essentially, this file will run when I make a push or pull request on GitHub, as seen here, and it will automatically build the game using the game's files that are already stored on GitHub. So now if I head into source tree, which I use as my version control client, and push a new change, we can head back into the actions tab of GitHub and see this action running, with the game being built in the cloud. And once that finishes running, it'll output this thing called an artifact, which in my case is a build of the game. So for example, I could download this artifact on my computer, run it, and boom, we can now play Slanky. But a bunch of stuff was kind of broken in these cloud builds, so we can just skip over the fact that I spent a few days suffering trying to get them to work like my local builds did. Anyways, I then did a bit more work, and now when I push a change, this action now has these compartmentalized jobs. So we have to prepare for the build, then actually build the game, and once those builds are finished, we can automatically upload them to Steam. So with this new action completed, we then get these two build artifacts, one for Windows and one for Mac. And the coolest part is that these two builds are automatically published to Steam on my beta branch with the help of GameCI. Then using a GitHub action I found, I created a simple Discord webhook to send whenever a new build was completed to notify my playtesters and also share all the new updates that were made to the game, which I could track by grabbing all the commit messages I made and converting them into a changelog with something called conventional commits. Finally, I made it so this action will only run when I pushed to my production branch on GitHub and kind of started to freak out because GitHub started to charge me for bandwidth and artifact storage. But don't worry about that, I got it figured out. So yeah, that's my new CI CD system for Slimekeep. It's honestly been so helpful with the workflow and production of my game so far, so I figured I'd just share the process even if it is a little more technical and non-Slimekeep related. But yeah, I'm just kind of surprised I never knew about this before, and I'm aware my system is a little basic in the DevOps world, but it's still just so cool to me that I can push to my GitHub repository and not have to worry whatsoever about building and deploying the game. And a big thanks to XCOMP Wiz. He kind of helped me and guided me throughout this whole process, so if you wanted to book a call with him, I'll leave his contact info below. But that's all I have for this devlog. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to wish the Slime Keep on Steam, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.